on bits. Whatever you want. A nice shiny new beat on bits. Beat on bits a real winner. There's always room for beat on bits. Just gotta love beat on bits. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Beat on Bits podcast. This is the show where I talk about passions, projects, and playlists with some pretty cool pretty cool people. <laughs> Today I have joining me Kenny, otherwise known as Kaisel on YouTube, coming all the way from Northern Virginia. If you want to say hi, Kenny. What's up, guys? Happy to be here. <laughs> yeah, so I'm a software developer and a DJ, and my mission behind the show is to just have a bunch of different people on to kind of give them a platform to share what they're passionate about, and then teach us a little bit something about what they do, and uh, yeah, just all have fun with it. So. Uh, the topics that Kenny is passionate about that we're going to mention today include music, motivation, good food, not just any food, and videography. So <laughs> if, uh, if you want to start us off with any of these, uh, maybe uh, mention anything that I missed in your introduction, or just pick a topic and we'll just go from there. No, uh, I think you, you got it all. Sounds good. Um, uh, I guess, uh, where do you want to start? We, we, talk, we can talk about anything. Okay, maybe let's uh, let's let's start off with your uh, YouTube channel uh, and like videography and oh, stuff okay. like that. Okay. Um, well, I'll say this: I started my YouTube channel maybe about two years ago, and it wasn't it wasn't something serious. It was just something that I just kind of like every once in a while would upload a video. I I didn't know about the YouTube world like I do now, and um, I guess a year later I started to get more serious, and then even like six or seven months from now. I really, you know, really just took it, took it to heart and just went uh, full throttle with it. And um, I absolutely love it. And my channel um, has been growing and it's all about uh, motivational spoken word. Um, I vlog, I do a lot of uh, cinematic vlogging and um, I just, I'm willing to try anything. So my channel sometimes has a lot of uh, very random things on it, uh, but I mean, it's all me you know, anything that I do on my channel, I try to represent it from either a mo motivational standpoint or just from a standpoint of like me just trying to share my experience with other people. Yeah. Well, one thing I, I thought was really cool was like your most popular upload at the time, I think, is uh, you're helping your friend propose. Oh, yeah. That one like blew. I, I didn't expect that at all. That one was <laughs> huge. That's like hundred and some thousand views and but it's like it's so well done and it just like hits your emotions when you watch the whole thing and everything and just everyone's commenting on it I really like that one that was cool I know they're like they're like where's the couple film them some more so uh, I've been trying to actually get them to start their own YouTube channel because everybody is like so interested and invested in their story yeah but yeah I if that I like doing that because um, part of what I do on my channels I, I you know, I, I like the cinematic aspect of it, and I kind of want to take that and do some outside work with it. And I've gotten a couple opportunities here and there, but I'm trying to get more of those. So I'm glad to see that everybody enjoyed the way I put the video together. Yeah. And then you kind of have like these cinematic vlog style ones, and then you have some motivational spoken word ones as well. So maybe if you want to tell us about how that all started and maybe uh, some of your favorite ones and some reactions that you've gotten to it. Um, so spoken word. So I used to be a rapper, <laughs> I guess. Um, I was in a few hip hop groups and, um, we would put songs together. Sometimes we would travel, I actually went on tour once a few places on the East coast and it was a lot of fun. And, um, I don't know. I just kind of, after a while, I, I felt like I was getting older and older and I was just like, I don't want to be out here like 35 and still rapping. Yeah. You know? Um, <laughs> so what happened was I, I had a friend who I saw do spoken word and I always thought that was really cool because I just liked the aspect of people just sitting and listening to the lyrical content and not necessarily having like all this music in the background. Um, it's just like straight lyrics and the way you deliver the lyrics and the way you perform it and everything. So I wrote one, I wrote, actually it was from like a rap that I did and I did my first spoken word performance. I made it like a spoken word performance mm -hmm. and people loved it. And from there, I just kind of, you know, just kept going, kept doing it. Um, I did a lot of, a lot of gigs here and there. And, um, somebody said one day I went to this meeting with the rap group that I was in cause I was still rapping at the time. And the guy said, 
uh, you know what, you guys need to start putting yourselves out there. He said, I don't care what it is. Don't worry about quality. Um, just worry about the content and just start start putting yourself out there. Mm -hmm. And I think that day is the day that I started taking YouTube seriously. And I went and I recorded my first spoken word. And I was just like, you know what, I, I you know, I absolutely love this. And I, I started doing one every single week, which was really difficult because I, I would write it, film it, edit it, perform it all in like a week. Wow. And it was, yeah, it drove me crazy. It was a lot of work. And I did that for a good four or five months, just every single week. And um, oh. I, I think it benefited, benefited me. It helped me. It helped me get better. And it also helped me just become a better, um, um, I guess a videographer, I didn't really call myself that at the time, but it just helped me get better with just like knowing my camera and, and upping the production value of what I was doing. And then just the reactions from people was amazing. I did um, one spoken word about depression and um, a really young girl hit me up and said, um, she, I can't remember exactly what she said, but it was something to the, to the effect that she was cutting herself and she said, uh, I really made her feel like it was time to make the move to stop cutting herself, I guess. Like, I just kind of gave her, like, a little boost of encouragement wow. um, based on the spoken word I did. So things like that really, like, make me want to do more and, and do it even better than I've been doing it before. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think some of my favorites now, though, because I started off, it would just be me and, like, my phone. I had, like, a Note 3. Yeah, <laughs> it yeah. Was like, the quality is horrible. They're still on YouTube. And I would just have my phone. I would set it up and I would do the spoken words like that. And then somebody actually saw what I was doing. They gave me a camera. And then oh. I actually ended up buying a camera. And um, now I try to I, I try to incorporate short films and spoken words together. So I want to give people not only just like lyrics that will encourage and motivate them, but also if you just want to see like a really good story, because sometimes that helps move along your message yeah um i kind of put those two things together and, and that's what i do now <laughs> that's so cool so someone actually like came across your content and decided to supply you with a better camera at the time yeah um it was actually i actually knew the person okay i okay. knew them and um i guess they had been watching me upload videos because like i said let's say at this point in time it may have been like three months straight that i was uploading a spoken word like every single week yeah and they were like i see what you're doing um, and it was somebody who was like into like filming and things, so they knew a lot more about cameras and stuff. They're yeah. like, I see what you're doing, and I believe in it, and I want to support it. So here's a camera, take it. And I was like, I was like, for real? I was like, this is crazy. And um, that kind of like started my journey as like, because I, I was never serious about like the quality of filming or anything. Yeah. But once I got that camera, and then I saw like the difference in quality. Then I started like watching other YouTubers. And I was like, wait a minute, how is this guy getting this like smooth slow mo? Or how is this guy's you know quality so good? Yeah. And then I started like really getting into like the film aspect of it. So that's awesome. Yeah. So you kind of you it all started with you basically putting yourself out there and then just pushing yourself, and then other people recognized you and agreed with you and like what you were doing, so they wanted to help, and now they helped you kind of deepen your passion for it and now everything is just kind of getting better and better from there yes definitely definitely another thing so i'll add this to real quick is uh i was so used to being in like these hip-hop groups yeah that i was so i was used to like depending on other people like hey let's do this and then i had to like wait for everybody to say yes or everybody to show up and when i like the satisfaction of taking my camera, filming myself, editing myself, and putting it up, I'm like, I just did something, and I didn't have to depend on a person. Like, that felt good. So um, I think that that part of it, too, I don't really talk about that a lot, but I think that part of it, too, is, like, um, very uh, satisfying to, like, my need to create. Yeah, that's, that, that's, that's a good point, too, because you have, especially in the creative process, you don't want to get, like, blocked by having to wait for somebody else or conflicting ideas here and there but you have total control like front to back to just make it yours right. and create the vision that you want to create from whatever feeling you had at the start so that's that's really yeah. cool because it would suck like you're doing podcasts it would suck if you like had to wait for somebody to bring the microphone over or something like that you know yeah like, yeah yeah it would hinder you you're like i'm ready to do it now and they're like ah, i got things to do so you know you you get it you understand <laughs> yeah 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 totally i think like one thing we like it was 
kind of an undertone of what we just talked about, but I think it's worth mentioning explicitly is that like deciding to do something and take it seriously and then just put yourself out there, it kind of attracts the kind of feeling that you're trying to put out too, which is like the positivity and the motivation and yeah. stuff and the vibes with other people and they want to help you get there. So it just kind of snowballs. So I think that's a, a really, a really fun thing that I'm finding with various people that I'm interviewing too is when they decide to take their passion seriously, like other people want them to succeed as well. And then they take it more seriously. They're putting out better quality stuff, which they feel better about. And then it reaches whoever needs it like much more readily and affects so much more people with you taking your passion seriously. So yeah, that's just, it's awesome to keep hearing that, especially on the show and with all my guests and stuff. So super awesome. Um, so nice, nice. yeah, so that's, uh, some really cool stuff on videography and kind of your story behind that. And, uh, you, you mentioned briefly kind of having an impact on people who've watched it too. Uh, and then making the motivational and spoken word kind of stuff. Um, so with, with the whole motivating aspect, did that also come from hip hop or was that kind of what you originally intended to do with your spoken word is motivating others or, uh, I, that, that also came from hip hop because, um, even in those groups, like the always like the the unofficial mission statement is like, OK, how can we make this song that's going to touch somebody's lives, you know, in some kind of way? And I think I was able to transfer that over into the spoken word. I don't think that that, you know, came from doing the spoken word. But I will say I think that it was amplified with doing spoken word, because, like I said, when you have people like in the comments who said this was amazing or um i did one i did a spoken word about uh domestic abuse and somebody was just like thank you for telling this story because this is my story and i was just like whoa and like that blows me away and even even if like one person out of like 200 people that watch it if one person leaves that message for me it's just like all right that was worth it that was worth the you know 20 plus hours of putting this whole thing together yeah so um i i think that it, it the the motivational aspect that i kind of wanted to present has always been there but yeah. i think when i started doing the spoken word it was definitely uh amplified and it just increased from the feedback i got from it yeah so these kind of topics that you choose to make each video or piece about are they inspired by like people you know, or just like things that you've looked up and come across, or how do you decide what to make a piece about? Some, some are very personal to me. Um, they're just the ways that I felt things that I've dealt with. Some are inspired by other people, like the depression spoken word. Somebody felt that way, um, and I was able to listen to that person and kind of translate that into like a spoken word piece. Um, and then some are just like topics that maybe I don't really exactly know somebody that went through that or maybe it's not nothing that i've experienced but it's just something that interests me um and usually what i do from there um is i i talk to people hmm. so you know i'm like i don't know I, i'm not like asking them hey give me some information for my spoken word is but it's just like through conversation like i don't know that anybody who's been like seriously abused domestically or anything yeah um but i do know a handful of people who have experienced some sort of abuse in their relationship. So I kind of took the things that they said and I was able to put that into the spoken word. And um, so everything in in some way, in one way or another, comes from a, a real place. Um, but I don't think I've ever like, like searched a topic and used it. I've searched a topic before because sometimes I hit like writer's block. I'm like, ah, oh, what can I talk about? Yeah. But it, it just never works for me. Um, so I kind of wait for that inspiration to hit and it's even now it's different because sometimes I don't have the spoken word, but I have the story. So I'll write a story first and then I'm like, okay, okay, now let me find the words to like, um, you know, help with the story and everything like that to go along with the story. Nice. When, yeah. when you were kind of making the weekly videos, did you, did you just have like that much inspiration or were, were, was that kind of like a grind to figure out what do you make the next video about? Oh, man. Well, the guy, remember I told you I talked to this guy and yeah. his the, the speech that he gave me and my friends was so like motivational that I was just like, I'm ready to work. Yeah. And I wanted to, um, you ever heard the saying like, 
you know, I might not be more talented than you, but I'll outwork you. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. I don't ever heard anybody say that, but um, I kind of took that that kind of mind mind frame um, on, and I just said, I just really want to work. And it's not necessarily about me trying to be better than anybody else. It's just like, um, I think any creator, anybody that does anything creative and puts, you know, they put it out there, they want to be heard. So I just wanted to be heard. And I said, if I really want to be heard, I got to work at it. So I said, weekly, I'm going to put them out. I'm going to put them out. I'm going to put them out. And even now, even though I'm not doing a spoken word every single week, yeah. uh, I've been really like grinding and trying to put out like at least two videos a week, which is a lot of work. Yeah. But it's like, like, as I said before, I want to be heard. I want to be seen and not in like a vain way, but it's just like, if I, if I truly want to, motivate and inspire other people they got to see me and if they and you know if they're going to see me i got to put the work in so that they can see me yeah. um so I, I think that's where the grind came from it's just like i don't want to just uh you know be lazy about it and just kind of like, every once in a while whenever i feel like i'll put something up because if you're passionate about something i mean you got to put work in so that passion so you can kind of like take that passion to you know new levels yeah so i'd, I'd yeah, be so. kind of uh curious to know exactly what did this guy say to you that motivated you so hard because you just mentioned i think that he said just get yourself out there don't worry about the quality just the contents what, what were some of the other takeaways from that I, mean, I can't remember the conversation all the way but i just remember um i remember the conversation just being about like what do you want is like the first thing he asked us and we're like well we want to do this with our music and we want to do this and we want to do that and he was just like, so what have you been doing to get that? And we we're like, I mean, I mean, we'll do music here and there. And he's like, that's not going to cut it. And he just really just like gave us a reality check. He was like, if you want something, you have to go out there and get it. And, you know, it was like cliche sounding things. But the way he presented it was like, it just, I don't know, it like clicked in my mind. And um, he was just like, he started giving us examples. I think this really hit me too. He started giving us examples of other people who just weren't worried about like having the most expensive camera or having the most expensive equipment or anything like that and just put themselves out there and how that just you know grew from this small thing that nobody cared about to this huge thing that now like million people millions of people are tuned into now and so i said wow that 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 could be me yeah. so uh i think just the fact that he was able to take so many other stories like that and be like look what this person did with very little and look look where it took them um it kind of like tore down the the boundaries and the roadblocks that i think a lot of creators have in their mind it was just like all right i'm, I'm going for it like it doesn't you know i don't care if i it, i even have this mind frame now i did a video called don't worry about the numbers because i really don't care that if i put a video video out and only 50 people see it mm -hmm. um you know it, it's it's about it's about putting the work in, getting better, um, being consistent. That's like the huge part about it: being consistent and um, being willing to willing to just you know put yourself out there and just all those themes that he kind of um, projected that night just stuck with me and like even now they stick with me. So even if I just don't know, like I don't know the video that I'm going to do for that week is like, I'm going to do something and I'm going to do it the best way I know how I'm just going to put myself out there. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's really powerful too. Cause you know, you don't necessarily have to know exactly what the end result is going to look like, but just putting in the effort and getting yourself in the mindset, I think is going to be beneficial, not necessarily to the exact thing that you're doing, but in the future, it'll just oh, yeah. help so much too. So yeah, really I, I like, I look at my old videos. I don't know if you're the same way. I look at my old videos and I hate them. Yeah, <laughs> I absolutely hate them. I'm like, what was I thinking? Yeah, but it's like that shows you. It's just like, wow, you know what? That was only like seven months ago. Look yeah, at the progress. Yeah, you know, so that like inspires me. Just you know, just looking at that. <laughs> yeah, I, I think as long as you have some form of like distaste for your older stuff, that indicates that you're <laughs> yeah. definitely improving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel the same way. Even about like, especially about my old like. DJ sets that I have up, like, oh, it's so bad. I don't know why I <laughs> put it up. <laughs> but it's now fun. I hear it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll link it or something. Well, well, maybe if I feel good about it later. <laughs> awesome. So, yeah, it's, it's like you're able to kind of motivate others by putting in the work, and that in turn kind of motivates you to do it more. And it's, 
it sounds like that conversation is really kind of the the catalyst for where it all took off. So you're kind of in this direction now and your whole hip hop crew got the same talk, right? How about where they ended up? Um, I really don't. (laughs) It's funny because I really don't talk to them as much now. I mean, not like, you know, anything bad. I just, you know, just kind of, you know, sometimes people grow apart. Yeah. Um, I actually have no idea what they're doing. Um, One of them actually hit me up and he said that he's been doing some things with his spoken word. Um, I haven't seen, he's not really an online person. He's just like, he likes to go out and perform, you know, uh, at these different gigs and things like that. So he he told me he's been doing well with that. So, I mean, I, I guess they're doing good. I wish both of them, you know, a lot of success uh, but I have no idea what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cool. Uh, that I just kind of, uh, I guess, further reinforces how seriously you're taking uh, your craft because you're just kind of focusing on that. And if other people come and help you along the way, then that's cool. But you're not trying to branch out kind of thing. And yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that's good. Um, so let's talk about a bit uh, of your music background and kind of, how you did with a hip hop crew, what that was like, what kind of got you into the scene? Um, it, it's kind of a, I don't know, it's kind of a stupid story, but um, I used to go to VCU, and at VCU, when I first went off to college, my parents gave me uh, a computer, and and I was messing around one day, and I noticed that I had a mic because of like the box the computer came in was like. Uh, still in my dorm room and I had never like taken everything out yeah and so I was like oh there's a mic in here so I I remember plugging the mic up and like messing around with the recording and then a bunch of my friends came in and we used to have this thing called no talent records (laughs) and what we would do it was like a a totally dumb made-up name yeah and we would come in they would come into my room and we would find like these instrumentals uh, and we would just like rap over them like freestyle and they were like they were so I kind of wish I still had them but the hard drive they were on ended up crashing. Oh. Um, but we would we would freestyle. So one day, we, well, we would have like these freestyles, and we'd all be in there laughing and joking, and it was like hilarious. So one day, we had a, a fire alarm go off, and we all had to go out in this parking lot. Yeah. So we're in this parking lot, and around campus, there were the real rappers, who, people who actually did rap. Oh. And um, one of my friends, trying to be funny and set me up, goes, Kenny raps. So now, like, there's like a crowd and everybody's hyping me up. They're like, they're like, let's go. They used to call me KJ. So they're like, let's go, KJ. And so I start rapping. <laughs> it was like the dumbest thing ever. <laughs> but I had, but here's the funny thing I had like one line. Yeah. One line that was like a good line. It's probably not a great line, but it was like a good line. Yeah. 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 And, and the reaction I got. Yeah. Just like it, I was like, what was that? Like, people like that. Yeah. So I was like, you know, I, I think I can rap. So I called a friend of mine back home. He was um, he was actually, I guess he said he was thinking about doing the same thing. And we started a hip hop group. Uh, I'm going to tell you what it's called. Don't laugh. It's <laughs> called Live Wires. It was like the dumbest name. I'm like super embarrassed about it. But we um, we actually did some pretty good things. We um, we did some shows. And from there, I had made a connection with another friend who's actually one of my best friends now. And we were like riding with him and we were doing a uh we were actually doing like a a tour with him um we would open up for him and then i had a song with him so i would be like the hype man on his set and then i ended up joining another group and i was just like doing music everywhere and um that was with you know the hip-hop and then i was also i also kind of like grew up playing drums as well so like all that incorporated together just kind of like started like the music path <laughs> awesome so okay you 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 gotta remember that one line that you had do you remember I, it? you know what i've tried i've tried so hard i cannot remember i knew it for a while and i cannot remember it so long ago oh no so long ago. i just remember saying it and it was like everybody was like oh it was i do remember another real rapper like somebody who actually was known for rapping around campus yeah and his rap name was skittles which I thought I think it's hilarious like yeah. to this day. Yeah. Um, but I cannot remember that line. I don't oh. know what I said. <laughs> That'd be funny if it was just something like really embarrassing or something totally random, but you just remember it as like <laughs> this amazing thing. 
<laughs> it probably is. It's probably like a, like if I knew it, it'd probably be stupid. I'd probably just lie to you and be like, yeah, I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, don't don't worry about it. Then we'll just put on the DL and. It was totally an amazing line. He told it to me before we started recording and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. We can go with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. So yeah, that's it's kind of uh, just started with this random mic you found and then snowballed from there. That's fun. So you got to play a lot yeah. of different shows in different cities and stuff, or did you keep it mostly local? Or it was mostly local. Um, we did like a couple things here and there in like other states but not really not that much um yeah it was pretty much local uh we tried to do some things but it just it never worked out um so it was a very i mean it was a lot of fun we used to have um when i did the when i hooked up with uh one of the guys we actually used to travel with a full band oh wow we had like this what we called the party van and we had we used to travel with all this equipment we had drums we had bass we had the the uh sound system we had speakers so i mean we were legit we just you know it's so the the music genre is so like saturated so it's like everybody's trying to do the same thing so it's just nothing ever took off um but it was a lot of fun yeah i i feel like that's a common theme with just like media in general like whether it's acting or music you really have to do something crazy to stand out or get super lucky in one way or another to really i will say that one of the guys that i hooked up with um me and him still do music together because he's he's one of those musicians that i hate because he plays everything oh yeah um so we have a um we have a group that we um we kind of travel with from time to time i play drums he plays keys um, we have a full band and a few singers, and so that's still going. And I'm I'm grateful for that because that's a really good outlet for me to like uh, express myself musically, you cool. know. Still, because yeah. I haven't given up on music. I just, <laughs> you know, I don't have any like rap dreams anymore. So, have you recorded anything with them, or it's only live performances? No, we've definitely recorded some stuff. Um, we've recorded some stuff. I've even done some spoken word on um, one of the albums. Uh, so yeah, we, we've done, we've done a bunch of things and we have some more things coming. So hopefully, awesome. hopefully we'll do some great, I don't want to say like anything we're going to do, but hopefully yeah. we'll have like some really great opportunities coming up. Do you want to plug the, the band name right now or? Sure. It's actually, it's actually a, um, a, a Christian group. Uh, it's called Rally Worship. Cool. Um, yeah. And we have some stuff on like Google play iTunes and all that stuff. So. I mean, awesome. if anybody wants to check it out. And I, I, like I said, I have like one spoken word on one of the songs we did, so. Cool. Yeah, that'd be cool to check out. I'll, I'll find it yeah. and link it in the description or something. All right, cool. <laughs> yeah. So uh, let's move on to the passion that I'm most excited about personally, which is good food. <laughs> yes. yes. So what can you tell us about the so, good food? So I joke around about it a lot. Like people always call me like they said on the in, inside, like, I must be like, well, I don't want to say that. I don't want to offend anybody. Let's, let's just say this. Okay. Um, I love to eat. Yeah. <laughs> I really do love to eat, and I love to travel. And anytime like, I travel somewhere, like the first thing that's on my mind is like, where am I going to eat? Yeah. And I don't know. I feel like, I feel like food, <laughs> this is going to sound so stupid, but I feel like food is like the, it's like, I'm, What's the word I'm looking for? It's like a connection that kind of like brings people together. Yeah. Like anytime you, you go out on a date, like you getting food is like one of the things you do. When yeah. you have like somebody you're meeting with or even like business meetings, sometimes you meet over food. And I feel like food like creates like that bond between people. Yeah. yeah and yeah. Um, I don't know. I just I love like trying new things. I, I really do. Anytime me and my fiance go out somewhere, we're like, we're somewhere that we haven't been. Nice. Um, so it's like, it's like, it's not like a, I don't want to make this seem like I'm like a chef or anything like that, but yeah. I just, I really do love to eat. Um, so it's like a funny passion of mine, but I get excited. Like I get excited when it's time to go, go somewhere new. There's this place around here. It's a Korean barbecue place called Iron Age. Anytime nice. we're going to Iron Age, I yeah. feel like a little kid that's about to go to like Disney World or Chuck E. Cheese or something <laughs> because I get excited. Yeah. So I don't know. I've always been like a fan of food like if i don't like somebody 
and they want to hang out and get some food, I might be willing to do it because food is involved. Yeah. <laughs> that, that shows you how much I'm influenced by food. <laughs> I can get past all the bad beef we have if we go have some real beef together kind of thing. Exactly. <laughs> uh, see, I like that. I, yeah. I feel like that'd be like a good tagline for something. <laughs> yeah, that's. I'll just get a tattoo across my chest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So that what? A t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> what? What's some? Do you have any stories of like uh, food that you've tried that you just never tried before, and it, it didn't go so well, or you've just loved everything you've tried? I do. I've had. Um, this is gonna make me seem like a bad person, but I've had kangaroo. Oh really? Yeah, I was in. Uh, I think this was, dang, where was this? I think, I don't want to lie. Where's where's the, like, the world's biggest mall, like the Mall of America? Is that in, like, um, Michigan or something like yeah, that? Yeah, I think I so. Know. Michigan or Michigan? Minnesota, somewhere around there. Minnesota. I think it's in Minnesota. That sounds okay. right. So I was in Minnesota, and um, I was with a coworker of mine, and we went to this place. I think it was called Hell's Kitchen or something along those lines. Yeah. And I, I started looking through the menu, and I see kangaroo, kangaroo, and I was like, kangaroo. So I ordered it because I've never had kangaroo before. Yeah. Um, it wasn't bad, uh, but it wasn't that good either. Like, if I saw kangaroo again, I probably wouldn't get it. Yeah. And. And then I felt evil because it's like I'm eating a kangaroo. Like kangaroos don't mess with anybody, yeah. you know, super heavily. So it's like I'm eating like I feel like I'm eating an animal that people consider to be cute and cuddly, and I'm like just eating it. <laughs> <laughs> so that one didn't go too well. But other than yes. kangaroo, everything else is everything else has been good. Yeah, everything. I mean, I don't really have a lot of like horrible experiences. I mean, we have. Google and Yelp and all those you know, yeah. reviews that we can look up before we place. But That's I get, true. I still like to this day, I still get excited. It's like, where are we going? Or oh, we're going here. Oh, I've never been here. What do they have? They got this, this, and this. Oh, let's go. Like, I get excited about it. I'm, I'm excited thinking about it. Yeah. What, what was the, what was the last thing that you tried that was totally new that you just loved? Uh, the last thing I tried. Um, I can't remember specifically but we did uh my fiance and i we went to this place and basically it's kind of like korean barbecue but with soup so you go to this place yeah and they there's like this i don't know it's not like a bucket but it's like a little pot yeah and you put a bunch of food in there and you can like cook it in the soup and then you take it out and eat it and i thought it was pretty cool we actually went twice and the food at food there was actually pretty good. I can't remember the name of the place, but um, I like places like that. Like just you know, just a new experience. You know. Yeah, that's true. Cause it's it, everyone's so used to like okay, order food and they'll bring it to you. But I think a lot of the, like the Korean barbecue and then those um, those hot pot soup places are really fun because you get to cook your own food. Yeah, and yeah, then share it. Yeah. You so you can feel like a chef, even though like everyone else prepared everything for you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Like, oh, my creation is like beautiful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Exactly. So you haven't, uh, have you traveled like overseas or anything and tried some, some crazy stuff or everything has just been uh, in the States? Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think. I've been to different places. I've tried, um, I feel like I'm saying this wrong, but I think it's called Kunk and it's in like the Bahamas. Hmm. I really didn't like it too much, but that's pretty good. Um, what else did I try? I went to the Dominican Republic, and I had some of their food. I can't remember. I didn't try anything crazy, so I don't really remember anything, but the food was pretty good. Um, I've been to Spain. I went to Burger King in Spain. That was actually really good. <laughs> <laughs> what was the Spanish Burger um, King like? Say it again? What was the Spanish Burger King like? Um, It actually, I mean, it tasted different, but it just, it tasted like a burger. It just tasted like a burger from like somewhere else <laughs> so yeah so it didn't taste like the normal like whopper that you would get here in america yeah. it just tasted like okay this is like a whopper but but not a whopper i don't know it's like it a sounds so burger, but it's like almost like you're in a, a different burger joint it sounds so um, dramatic and mysterious like uh, a <laughs> old school detective has a burger it's like this burger is from somewhere else <laughs> that's uh, awesome yeah 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 exactly <laughs> That's cool. um, I'm trying to think. Where else have I been that I tried somewhere new? Um, I, I can't think of anything. I don't think I need to be more adventurous because I can't think of anything. Um, 
I'm trying to think of some other crazy foods I've tried. I've tried crocodile. Oh, nice. Uh, I mean, allig- I'm sorry, alligator. That was pretty good. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Is it pretty easy to find all these kind of different kinds of foods in your area, or do you have to travel quite a bit yes. to get them? Yes, I was going to say, living in the northern Virginia area yeah. um, is actually really good for, like, trying new places. So, because D.C., I, I live, like, 30, 40 minutes away from D.C., oh. so there's a lot there's a lot of places to try. Then you have Maryland, that's not too far. You could try places there. Richmond is, like, an hour and 30 minutes from me, so there's places you can try there. So we live in a good area to where, like, okay, we have, like, the northern Virginia area with a lot of food. You have D.C., you have Maryland, uh, you have Richmond. Baltimore is not too far. If you really want to be adventurous, you can go to Philly or New York. Yeah. You know, those those drives aren't too bad um, as well. So, um, yeah, I mean, we went to New York last year and we just, we tried everything. Like, we went to some uh, hole-in-the-wall Chinese spot, which was probably the best Chinese food that I've ever had. Wow. Um, we went and tried. You ever see like where they do like the frozen ice cream and they're like scraping it and they're like these rolls that they put oh, together yeah, yeah, and they yeah. can like yeah we tried that. Um, we did a lot of things. So like this is a really good area to like find a lot of places. Cool. Do you know if there's anything in your area that's hard to find outside of it? Like what's the local specialty where you're at? Hmm. Um. Or what is? What do you have that's better than everyone else's? Better than everybody else's? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I don't know if we have anything better. Um, I just think we have a good variety. I'm trying to think. Sonic, we have Sonic out here. I don't know if Sonic is anywhere else outside of the uh, Virginia area. Maybe I, I think I there know. are I some like Sonics around. I don't Sonics. think like I'm up in Canada. And we don't really have any Sonic up here, but I think I think they do have it at other places around the U.S. too. Okay. By the way, I've been to Canada and I love Canada. We went to Canada last August. That's where I actually proposed. Oh, no way. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. We ate really, really good. We (laughs) ate good. Like everything I ate was good. (laughs) We didn't have one bad meal. Oh, okay. So here's one. I went to the Poop Cafe in Toronto. Oh, the like the toilet themed cafe? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. We went there. That was actually, that was actually pretty good. You guys had some good desserts. And then I went to... Like, on that same street, there was, like, this chicken wing place. Oh, yeah. that was really good. I can't remember the name of that. So I would definitely put Canada as, as one of the places that have good food. Yeah, I definitely love it. My, my area is, like, kind of more on the west side, and we're known for, like, our beef, like, the Alberta beef. And, oh, uh, okay. Yeah, it's we have some really good beef here. And then I was surprised. Uh, I think, like, my friend moved to Hong Kong, and he told me that some place was marketing like Alberta beef in their store. And I was like, wow, I didn't know that anyone outside even like knew about it, but I guess. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So that Alberta grade beef, some good stuff. Just try it. Okay. I, I love, um, I will say this cause you mentioned Hong Kong. I love sushi. And so like one of my bucket list things to do is to go over to, I want to go over to China and just like try sushi over there because I feel like it would be so much more, you know, amazing than it is here, than any place you can get over here. Yeah, the thing, I think, uh, I have a lot of friends from, like, China and Japan and stuff, and they say, well, my friend from Hong Kong specifically told me, you can get good sushi in China for a lot cheaper, but in, in Japan, like, the original sushi is just, like, another level, but it's more expensive. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So... It's, it's worth trying in both places, I think, for sure, at some point. So that's where I need to go. Yeah. I, oh, the only reason I said the only reason I said China is because I actually had a friend that went to China and was just like, I had, like, amazing sushi. So when they said that, I was like, oh, I got to go there. So, yeah. so Japan does make more sense, though. Yeah, <laughs> but both, <laughs> both are good, let's be honest. Both are good. <laughs> okay. I guess I just have to go with both places. Yeah, yeah, do a I'm little tour. I'm doing that. That'll be awesome. <laughs> So we're uh, getting close to the end of my typical interview length. So with okay. this, we'll just shift to the playlist part and talk about the three songs that you gave me before the interview and just talk a little bit about, I guess, the story with those and what you like about them. So your list included Lingus by Snarky Puppy, His Pain by BJ the Chicago Kid featuring Kendrick Lamar, and Daughters by John Mayer, the Where is the Light album version. So... What are these songs? Uh, what do you like about these songs? All right, I'll say the one thing that all the songs have in common is like feel. They like the 
the feel they give off and the way they make me feel um, is is probably the one thing that I would say they all have like the the power to do. Um, like Lingus, I like Lingus because as a musician, it gets me really excited to listen to it. Um, I'm a drummer, so I love listening to that record just for the drums. Like the drums are amazing to me, um, and I like all the musicians. Like the musicianship on that album is crazy to me. Um, so, and then for the the one with BJ, the Chicago Kid, and Kendrick Lamar, I really like that one because. Uh, again, there's like the piano in the background. It's, it's mm. so smooth. It's kind of jazzy, but it's still hip hop because I really love hip hop. I mean, yeah. that's I grew up on hip hop. Um, the lyrics are really good, and the message behind the song is really, really amazing. Um, it's this guy saying he's experiencing this pain and he doesn't know why, and then he figures out why, and it's just like so he can help others with their pain. And it's just like I like that message. Yeah. Um, and then what was the last? What was the last one? Oh, daughters. Man. Yeah. Um, oh, I love I love the feel of the album. The reason I say the it's you know the where the light is album is because it's the acoustic album. Mm. There's not too much going on. It's not too busy. It's just him and his guitar. It's yeah. really like intimate. And the lyrics to the song and the message behind the song, just like how like the way you bring up your daughter is gonna affect like the world pretty much is how oh. he puts it. Yeah. Um, so. Um, I, I just like songs with a message and songs that feel good and then songs with a lot of musicianship. And I also felt like all those songs represented the different types of genres of music that I enjoy. Yeah, and it's it's a pretty widespread too, but like it has that common theme which you describe, which is, is really nice. Just yeah. Hitting you in the feels and appreciate the different parts. So that that's really cool. It's it's I think it's fun that you mentioned Snarky Puppy because actually this past week has been Jazz Fest in my city. And I know nothing about oh. jazz, but apparently Snarky Puppy was like a huge sellout show this week in, in my city. So that was surprising to to hear you say that too today. Oh wow, that's pretty, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, of course, like Kendrick Lamar stuff is is awesome. And, like everyone knows that, and John Mayer is really good and and stuff too. So yeah, I think I, I like your choices. I'm gonna have fun throwing these together in a mix and make them all flow together in some way it'll be fun i'll figure it out yeah i can't wait to hear that that's gonna be, that's gonna be i'm kind of wondering how you're gonna like mix those together i want to hear it i'm wondering too i guess i'll figure out when i get there <laughs> yeah I so gave a challenge man yeah 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 no i appreciate it thank you so uh that brings us to the end of all we had to talk about for this episode so we figured out all of uh kenny's passions projects and playlists for today so thank you for sharing those with us uh if you want to find him on social media, how can they do that? Um, so my Instagram is at K Soul Music. It's K S O U L, then the word music. Um, and then my uh, YouTube channel is just K Soul, K Space, the word soul. Awesome. So pretty simple. <laughs> yeah, so find him at K Soul Music on Instagram and K Soul on YouTube. If you want to follow any of my stuff, it's all Beat on Bits, B D O N B I T S, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. And uh, yeah, so that brings us to the end of another episode. If you want to just send us off, Kenny, just say bye. Uh, well, I just want to say thanks for the opportunity, and uh, I can't wait to see this video. And for those of you watching, I hope everybody has a wonderful, wonderful week or weekend, whatever time it may be. Awesome. Thanks so much for joining us, and thank you for watching. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.